Hi, welcome back and thank you for joining me. So, a um, bit of a uh, Halloween howler, let's say, uh, today. Um, basically, I have killed a record, this one specifically, uh, Muse, you make me feel like it's Halloween. I have killed this, destroyed it, with ultrasonic cleaning. So uh, please stay tuned and I will go through um, how I managed to do that. Okay, so what I'd like first of all is just any of you who haven't seen my previous videos, I'll, I'll put a link below. Uh, I think I've done four, four or five videos previously on record cleaning and the last, um, well, all but one of those, are actually me looking into ultrasonic cleaning. And I was really doing that for personal, you know, for personal interest, really. I wanted to find out which ultrasonic machine was gonna be the one for me. I had previously tried a couple, a Kermas and um, a Kuzma kind of uh, topper unit for, to, to convert a generic ultrasonic tank into a record cleaning machine. And um, had experienced really good results, or really interesting results, let us say. Something that warranted further investigation. Anyway, the two, um, you, you, know, you, you can go through all the, the previous videos I've, I've, I've linked to below if you like. Um, the most recent one obviously has the most information and I've got kind of notes for that here. There's uh, eight pages of notes of, of uh, listening to various things cleaning various albums and at that point in time i bought four copies of the same album um muse the will of the people which again as i say uh the the track that we chose to listen to because it's just uh it's got lots of contrast is the first track side two you make me feel like it's halloween um highly appropriate for this time of year um, the next track's Kill or Be Killed, which is again kind of quite pro appropriate for what we're talking about here. But anyway, um, subsequent to that, I went out and bought another two copies. So I've now got six copies of the same album, brand new. Uh, and, and the reason was so I can clean it in various different ways um, and keep referring back to, um, you know, to different references, etc. Uh, as I say, there's, there's, there's sort of full details below. But um, just to sort of run through um, overall kind of conclusions from that and then where I took it, where I took the experimentation following the last video. So basically, I ended up concluding that really the D-Gritter was the machine for me. Um, it, it, it bettered the humming guru in my experience. And also um, another conclusion I, I kind of reached was um, putting sort of heavy cleaning fluids in the ultrasonic machines kind of brought about more problems than they solved. Uh, and there was a couple of instances where I, you know, I, I tried uh, degritter fluid, which, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good cleaning solution. Um, but um, I think the residue left on your record from after a D you know, certainly the ultrasonic cleaning was inferior. Uh, you, could, you could tell there was a, a layer of veiling and a layer of noise brought back into the equation by using too strong cleaning fluids or, or more importantly, by not rinsing them off really thoroughly. And I mean, really thoroughly. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll return to the subject of cleaning fluids in a little bit more, but I want to go on about how I, and let's find a specific one. It was copy number three. I just numbered them. Um, so this this is the one that is destroyed. And there's no visible damage, I have to say. I mean, it's it's not a black LP, so it's not the easiest, but there is no visible damage at all. But it's it, it sonically, it sounds, um, it's, well, it's, it's destroyed. But let me just tell you why I did this. So the first thing is, if you read, um, if you read up on, on ultrasonic cleaning, cavitation anywhere, you'll find that the um, the bubbles, we call them bubbles, but they are actually uh, vacuum cavities, if you like, 
so there's nothing in them, it's a vacuum. So rather than popping, they will implode. And when they implode, uh, if you imagine this is a vacuum in, in, in the space between my hands, and, and uh, you know that's up against the record surface, this is highly microscopic, obviously. That when that implodes, it does so with with a lot of ferocity, and it would it, it'll just it'll suck the water in around it very violently, and thus sort of pull, rip, whatever contaminants off of the surface of the record. And the frequency of the cavitation, the ultrasonic frequency, is indirectly proportional to the size of those bubbles. So the higher the frequency, the smaller the bubbles, and the more gentle their cleaning effect is. Now, Degritter chose 120 to 125 kilohertz as their cavitation frequency. It's actually sort of oscillates between those two um, as being more appropriate for vinyl, softer, more gentle, safer. Uh, and all of those words to me as a record collector were, were, were hitting, um, you know, hitting sweet spots, so to speak. And of course it makes you wonder, well, what's, what's the, um, you know, what's the alternative? And of course, uh, Humming Guru used 40 kilohertz, which is, they're not alone. The KL Audio uses 40, the, um, uh, Kermas, I think uses 35. Um, and um, most, I mean, nearly all of the generic ultrasonic cleaning tanks use 40. And of course, these things were initially introduced for cleaning. I don't know, you know, your carburetor on your car or your, you know, your, your or jewellery, you know, diamonds and gold and very, very, very hard things um, or, or medical, you know, instruments, <coughs> scalpels and things. So, you know, all those things are a lot harder than vinyl and, and it really, you know, it, it, I had a degree of caution about the whole process. And all, and also one other thing is when I tried this, I said, well, two or three years ago now, maybe three or four at first, um, particularly with the Kerma system, where you brush some chemicals on and then you put it in an ultrasonic rinse for maybe, bath for maybe five minutes, take it out, dry it, put some more solution on, put it back in. And you might do this three or four times, four or five times even. So it can kind of add up to, you know, maybe half an hour in the ultrasonic tank, something like that. And um, one of the traits, it was, I mean, the, the Kermis when I first tried it was, it was a, you know, it was mind blowing and impressive in the, in the degree of cleaning it offered. But it did leave me with a sort of slight, is it, is it, um, is it just a little bit brittle? And, and what's it done? to my vinyl, has it made it sort of more brittle, more, you know, has it actually damaged it in any way? And, and, you know, I was left with that very slight kind of concern. So if I go back to my four way test, which I, which I detailed in these, in these notes and in my previous video, uh, just to sort of really kind of summarize, um, the, the kind of character of each method of cleaning. And really there was, there was the, the four records, there was one was uncleaned as a reference. The one I cleaned on my lorry craft with fluids. And in that instance, I used Clear Audio Pure Groove, which is a, you know, it's a powerful record cleaning fluid, vinyl cleaning formula that, that you know, I've been using for several years. Um, and then the, uh, the, other, the other two records, one was cleaned in the Humming Guru, and one was cleaned in the degritter, and both of those were with pure distilled water with a 0.03% solution of Ilfotol. Uh, there's one caveat on that I'll come back to in a bit. So um, just to give you an idea, so on one clean, uh, the, the lorry craft with the chemicals was very effective, much more space and clarity, the music seemed faster, um, more dynamic contrast, better texture, more layering, and, and a, a lot of weight. The Humming Group improved the space and the clarity even over the lorry craft, um, but it was perhaps not as colorful, um, not as three-dimensional, uh, and, and if it had a trait, it was slightly mechanical. 
the degritter on the first clean, um, it actually made the record from uncleaned seem slightly darker. Um, the humming group definitely in, in, increased the light, the, the, uh, the, the degritter, if, if anything, darkened it. Um, but it seemed faster, like the Lorycraft did. Um, and it kind of had the, um, the openness of the humming group cleaning, but more space. So it's kind of a halfway house between between the two. But on balance, I would say on one clean, both the lorry craft with chemicals and the humming group kind of were more impressive, let's say. Uh, whereas the degritter was was tending towards just sort of quietness, resolution, less hash, less grittiness. Um, it was kind of a, a less in, a less impressive, um, but more kind of. Uh, natural sound, if you like. On the second clean, um, the lorry craft still had the most sort of colour and weight to the sound. Um, the humming guru was very clean sounding, but slightly mechanical, slightly kind of um, forensic almost. And the degritter was the, the smoothest with the best depth, the quietest surface the sweetest but but not as ballsy as the other two now on three cleans we kind of hit i would say the sweet spot for for, for most machines in fact on the, the lorry craft i didn't bother cleaning um disc two that was so i've got all these here i mean they all look the same but bar for numbers but the lorry craft i didn't bother cleaning beyond three cleans because it really wasn't improving and i've used the lorry craft for years I know it's you know that, that that there is a sort of a ceiling, if you like, a a plateau at which you reach with that with that cleaning method, which uh, ultrasonics definitely can raise that ceiling. There is no question. Um, so you you can clean better with ultrasonics than you can <clears throat> with a vacuum machine. There's no question in my mind about that. Anyway, so. Um, I just sort of proceeded with, with discs three and four, the, the, the humming guru and the degritter. Now on clean four, and this is this is quite quite um, interesting. On clean four, the degritter was easily the best. Okay, it was um, you know it really pulled up, pulled out ahead. Um, the humming guru. This is the first point at which I suspected that possibly it was a step backward. Um, because it was just the overriding feeling was a sort of harsh mechanical uh, quality, even though it was very dynamic and very powerful and very kind of clean, if you like. Um, and at that point, I changed the humming groove water fluid because I, you know, I just just in case that was an issue. Um, and then we went on five cleans, six cleans, um, and. Those traits really, really stuck. Um, I, I then, after six cleans, I cleaned um, both the filters, which I noticed the degritter filter was filthy and the humming glue was barely soiled, which kind of made me think it's, it's you know, what, well, the only conclusion I could take is that the, the, the degritter was actually getting muck off the record and the humming glue was either the filter isn't very effective or it wasn't actually doing its job. And I changed the fluid and I, by mistake, I actually miscalculated and I used a, um, a mix to 0.3% Ilfetol solution rather than the 0.03% solution I was intending. And uh, I did two cleans before I realized my mistake. And the uh, particularly with the humming guru, I noticed that the, the, the surface noise increased there. So that's we'll get, get onto that a little bit later. But that was that was a very poignant point indicating that um, rinsing. Uh, I'll get onto this. Whatever chemical you use, rinsing it off is of paramount in point importance. I would suggest. Um, and anyway, continued on. And in the first test, which which again, you know, you'll see in my previous video. Uh, I concluded that the the, the degritter was the one for me. Um, it, had, it had, you know, hands down beat better to the, uh, the humming guru. Uh, and that was on 12 cleans, 12 five minute cleaning cycles on each one. 
and um, but it was it's worth noting that that really on about three cleans you've kind of got 95 percent of that potential reached so it's not that you have to clean it 12 times every record you know i mean well i wouldn't this isn't an, a, a clean every time you play a record process anyway i clean things once when i get them and then i'll re-clean them and nowhere near as thoroughly just give them a quick clean if if they get left out overnight or, or you know they're they're you know i accidentally touch them with my greasy fingers you know that kind of thing um but anyway i i decided to um stick with the degritter basically but i also thought i ordered a second um fluid reservoir for the degritter because you can program it to work with two fluids and i thought that's something that i really want to investigate particularly because of the you know I'd, I'd shown a spotlight on the importance of um uh rinsing by by the fact that um you know when i mistook and used a 0.3 percent solution of ilvatol uh there was a slight failing and and um, a slight increase in surface noise and and that that you know that that echoed previous uh, experiments I'd done with 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 the um, um, degrader fluid and, and and other things, and even on my lorry craft uh, using the clear audio fluid, uh, you, you know I'd, I'd proven to myself that following that with a a pure distilled water rinse definitely improved the sound quality. So. And there's two things I wanted to investigate. You know, why, why, one of the things is why the degritter uh, outperforms the humming guru. And, uh, and I wanted to look further into the subject of um, fluids and rinsing. So anyway, the, uh, the, the second um, degritter tank arrived. And I'll, as I say, I'll, I'll get on to, um, I'll get on to that in a minute, but I just want to go back to this, you know, the, the, ultrasonic machine and what was going on with the humming guru so i took this record and i gave it um basically i gave it another 13 five minute cleaning cycles so in total it had 25 cleaning cycles um and uh, that's about 25 times five minutes it's just just over two hours of ultrasonic cleaning um, important thing to bear in mind here are the specifications of the humming group. So that's 40 kilohertz. Um, bear in mind what I said earlier about the frequency and the size and sort of aggressiveness, if you like, of the uh, ultrasonic action. Anyway, after 25 cleans, I gave this a listen and, you know, there's no question. It's, it's awful. It's ruined. It's, it's, it, it sounds bad. It actually sounds noticeably worse, I would say, than the uncleaned uh, copy number one. And again, this is this is the beauty of having this, you know, this system. I can I've got an uncleaned. I've got the one that's just had uh, lorry craft cleaning with clear audio pure groove. I've got the ones with the deep gritter cleaning, and and this this one is now the worst sounding of the lot. It is actually ruined. Um, <clears throat> dynamically, whereas initially humming guru cleaning kind of seemed to make things sound a little bit more kind of, you know, wham bam, um, kind of impressive. It's actually kind of it, it dynamically it was flat. The top end, the high frequencies, are almost erased, and confusing sections are really confusing. You know, the busy sections of music are really really confusing. I mean, it really 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 sounds bad. And I've played this to three or four people now, and yeah, that one is ruined. So we've got to look at why and what's happened here. And I can only assume that it is the 40 kilohertz um, cavitation. Um, and, and, you know, hence, you know, degritter de obviously use 120 kilohertz for very good reason, because it's, you know, smaller, finer uh, cavitating action. That, that can get deeper into the grooves and while it's in the grooves it will be more, more gentle and, and subtle and soft on it and all the way down if you listen if you if i sort of um go through my notes uh, these kind of quite extensive notes each each um description of the changes is 
the humming guru is kind of sounding like you've kind of taken a pressure washer or a jet washer or, or something or a steam cleaner or some, some quite harsh cleaning process, a mechanical cleaning process even, to, um, to the record. You know, sort of blasting away murkiness, but you're, you're taking all the sort of the edges with it type of thing. Whereas with the humming guru, it was much more like you just sort of really subtly clearing a mist uh, to reveal the sort of the natural landscape underneath. Very beautiful um, versus very kind of harsh. And that ties back to my memory of the Kermis to some degree. And I was chatting to a couple of friends, uh, Dave and Henry, who live in Johannesburg. And um, they're both you know, audiophiles with uh, very good systems and, and have experimented and and with all sorts of uh, record cleaning systems, they've, they've, uh, I think Dave's got a Kermis. They've, they've had, they've had a Tequitter. They've had all sorts of record cleaning machines, honestly. And they were telling me about this guy um, that they use in America called Perfect Vinyl Forever. That's his business name, anyway. I don't know the guy, um, but I looked up his website, and it was really interesting. And basically, uh, I think Harry had had a couple of batches of records back from him. You post him your records. And he posts them back cleaned. And his process is, um, it's, it starts with, you've got two, uh, you know, let's call it chemical soak baths. So similar to what I'm doing with the lorry craft, but two stages of a chemical bath clean, and then two ultrasonic cleans. And one of them, the first one at 120 kilohertz, and the second at 250 kilohertz. And I found this is really interesting because they're, you know, none of them are 40 kilohertz. And, and, and you know, re reportedly, according to my friends, they were, you know, totally trust their, you know, their ears. This is really, really impressive stuff. So, um, and that kind of ties in with my experience. So I just thought, let's... Um, you know, let's invest, it, it, it's got to be, basically, it, 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 to my ears, to my logic, to my thinking, um, it has to be down to the uh, the cavitation frequency because the, you know, the, the humming guru is five times less powerful than the degrisser. Um, it can't be like it's using the same process, but, but it's just overdoing it with power because it isn't, it's, it's got a fit of the power, but it's that frequency. That's where the difference is. And the only, you know, the, 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 the nature of an ultrasonic cleaning machine like this, uh, the only thing in contact with the, with the record is the, is the fluid. So it's not, um, it's not like, you know, one of them's got coarse brushes or something like that. Uh, so all I can assume is that it's the 40 kilohertz cavitation frequency is potentially, possibly, something has damaged this record and that is basically all I can surmise that it is. So, um, you know, it's not, it doesn't mean to say that the Humming Guru is terrible and that all 40 kilohertz record cleaning machines are terrible because, you know, on, as I say, on three cleans, on three cleans, I, I rated the Humming Guru as better than the Lorry Craft. I did prefer the degritter performance to the Humming Guru, but, you know, for most people, they don't want to clean the record 25 times, let alone 12, you know, 12 times or eight times or whatever. Three times is probably more than enough. And on one clean, it's certainly impressive. But my concern is even with one clean, it's like you've only slightly damaged it. I'd, I'd rather not damage it at all. That's that's my concern. So anyway, there we are. I'll wrap up on the subject of cavitation frequencies and potential damage. But... I have killed this record and have killed it with ultrasonic cavitation, specifically at 40 kilohertz, okay? All the records I've cleaned with the degrit, it doesn't matter how many times I clean them, it, it, it's, you know, there's definitely a plateau where the improvements lessen each time, but at no point ever did I feel that there was a step backwards, okay? Now, I want to get on to uh, the second sort of subject, which we touched upon earlier, and that's um, fluids and rinsing. And that's really why I bought copies five and six, 
because I wanted to try and um, come up with a, a solution that, that uh, equaled the, you know, the eight, well, you know, maybe three is enough, but three, eight, 12 d um in, in performance, uh, but, but was easier, easier and quicker to get to. So um, I have actually settled on my, my you know, my ongoing situation is I, I um, and it's, you know, to some degree aping, the perfect vinyl forever solution. So I, I clean typically with pure groove on the lorry craft. Um, in the case of pure groove, I don't feel that a, a rinse on the lorry craft is necessary. And then I'll, I'll, I'll give it a one or two sessions in the degritter. And one is normally enough uh, because I've got this um, rinsing tank now and the degritter will automatically you know, you can set it up so that it says, right, change tanks now, etc. So it has, uh, you know, the record will have a, a clean on the lorry craft with pure groove that's vacuumed off. Then it will have um, a six minute cycle in the degrisser of ultrasonic cleaning at 120 kilohertz with pure distilled water, Ilfetol solution uh, at 0.03%. And then in the rinse tank, the second, second rinse tank, which gives it about a minute and a half of ultrasonic rinsing, that's pure distilled water with nothing in it. Whether that's necessary with just a 0.03% solution in the first bath, I wouldn't like to say, but if you're putting any chemical stronger solution in that first bath, then definitely. Okay, so the next and final thing that I want to talk about that uh, I tried is I've heard, you know, equally passionate for and against Turgiclean or Turgitol. Turgitol, Turgiclean, they're both trademarks and they're, they're you know, they're basically, um, I think Turgiclean is a trademark of a brand that sells, a, a, you know, Turgitol in a, in a solution specifically for record cleaning. Now, Turgitol, which this contains, is a uh, it is a surfactant it's a uh, wetting agent and it's a detergent and, and actually they're all they're kind of all the same thing in a way okay i've tried it because some people absolutely rave about it now some people will vastly warn against it and there's two reasons um i've seen my michael Frem has mentioned this on on a, on a few occasions now the negatives uh, the first one is that, um, and this is not specifically aimed at Turgitol, but, but uh, Michael strongly recommends that you only clean it in pure distilled water, uh, that you don't need chemicals. Now, I think chemicals, as I said earlier, can help massively with, with reducing contaminants, removing contaminants, but you need to get them off. Now, the thing with this is, I would say, from, me, from, from my experimentation, it is a very, very, very thorough cleaner. And it is actually as good as, or even better than pure groove at dissolving and getting rid of muck out of the grooves. The second observation I'd make about it is, it is an absolute nightmare to rinse off. I'll just insert a little piece of video here. So this was a very, very weak, you know, made up according to the instructions, solution of uh, Turgiclean in the degritter's kind of A tank, so to speak. And then the B tank had um, pure distilled water in it. And this video here is showing the rinse, the rinse cycle. Um, and you can just see how much foaming there is, uh, how much residue of this that there is left in the machine, left on the disc. And of course, if you put this, um, even in a very, very mild solution, like you know, just subsequent experimentation, you know, basically you clean a record with this and uh, it's the, the water that you then use to rinse, you've got to throw that out because the water you've used to rinse a record that's been cleaning this is basically becomes a, you know, a turgy clean cleaning fluid. It's, it's so powerful. Um, so, I, you know, it, its cleaning effect is good. And I will, you know, I'll keep it in the cleaning cupboard and use it here and there. But um, definitely for me, it's to be used with the lorry craft, 
brush it on in its very dilute solution, vacuum that off, which helps massively in these situations because there's less residue on the record, but then rinse a good two rinses, of, of, and which are then vacuumed off uh, the lorry craft before putting it into the degritter to um, give it a clean water ultrasonic rinse. Uh, the other negative people um, talk about with surgery clean is that, that it, it, it may well be uh, carcinogenic. Now, uh, I can't comment on that. I've got no information on that. But, but, you know, clearly, if that's the case, that's a really not a good thing at all. So all I'll say with uh, with regard to this is, yes, it is actually very, very, very effective cleaner. But a treat with extreme caution, you know, don't drink it for heaven's sake. And um, probably best to wear rubber gloves when, when you're using it, just in case it can, you know, get into your bloodstream via your skin. Some things can, you know. So treat with extreme caution. It is effective, uh, but it's, it's so tenacious and requires such a lot of rinsing. I would not use it in my ultrasonic machine. I had to basically um, completely empty the degritter, clean out, wash out and rinse um, both baths with soap and water and then rinse and, uh, and the tank and change the filters because it was just, you know, it gets everywhere and, and um, you know, and you, you, you refill your machine with clean water, run it through a cycle and your water in there is dilute turgiclean again. So treat with extreme caution. But it is an effective cleaning agent. But for me, my go-to still for the pre-clean is uh, Clear Audio Pure Groove. But, you know, the Turgy Clean cleaned off is as good, I would say, uh, effectively rinsed off. So I think that's, um, I think that's really uh, it for today's video. Um, as I say, that you know, the, the, the big kind of, uh, the big kind of, shocker i think is is that um you know this record is uh, is definitely um degraded beyond its new condition and uh you know the only things to have touched it are the stylus and the fluid in the hummingaroo um and you know hummingaroo it, it might be a cheap unit and, and, and the rest of it but it's you know what difference is there in there to uh, to a KL Audio, for instance? You know, I don't, I I genuinely don't know. The KL Audio has got four times the power of the Humming Guru, but uses the same um, frequency for its operation. It also has more transducers. So, you know, do you have to be even more wary of overcleaning? I don't know. And if any of you've got any um, experience of this, I would love you to leave comments in the uh, comments down below. Uh, but basically, you know, my curiosity got me the better of me with this one. And I just wanted to to see if uh, those traits of sort of harshness, you know, the, the character, if you like, of the, the Humming Guru cleaned record were indicative that it was actually causing damage. And, and yes, I genuinely believe it was. Okay, so on that note, I will uh, say, Thank you all for bearing with me. And that's been a, a bit of a long wordy kind of video, but um, thanks very, very much for watching. And uh, if you do like what I do, uh, please press the like button, YouTube, um, you know, that really helps with my YouTube positioning and rating. And, uh, and um, please subscribe and I'll um, see you all again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.